Hello and welcome back. I'm Nicole, a cottage witch, and we're going with questionable lighting today because the sun is gone. So that's what we're doing. Uh, also, yeah, so the shadows are a bit funny um, and my hair is never in a ponytail so it's weird to see, but it needs a wash. So there we are. Um, anyway, I have some books that I got. I have a whole, it's a huge stack of books. Like this big. It's slightly ridiculous. Um, I had ordered a whole, like I'd gone on a mm, scavenger hunt on the internet for secondhand books that would fulfill the Read Around the World challenge. So books from all over the world. Some actually found some gothic and horror books that I want to try and uh, a couple of pre-orders as well, but mostly um, they're secondhand from wherever I could find them. Sometimes Amazon, like third, those third party sellers, I don't know what you call them, but the thrift ones. Um, I still have a few on the way, but they're from like eBay and God knows when I'll get them with the postal system. So who knows, the, the lighting really is very funny today. I could just do a whole video with shadows. Um, anyway, the first one is, which I can basically just sit on my stack of books, um, The Bloody Chamber uh, and Other Stories by Angela Carter. I think Angela Carter, yeah, Vintage Carter, it says. Fancy. Um, I had never heard of her before this year. I heard many other people had heard of her. Um, so this is ten, about 10 stories. Some of them sound a bit fairy tale-ish, which could be fun. Uh, and I've heard some are a bit horror-ish and some are a bit gothic-ish. Um, so it says, from familiar fairy tales and legends, yada yada, Angela Carter has created an absorbing collection of dark, sensual, fantastic stories. Cool, I can get behind that. Then I got two books in this, what's it called series. I have. Does this series have a name? I should look it up and be, you know, a responsible booktuber. Huh. Um, the British Library. I'm not sure that's really helpful. So basically there's a series of like 12 of these books um, that I saw at, yeah, the, oh, okay. The British Library Tales of the Weird. Why they couldn't put that on the cover, I don't know. Or somewhere in the front. But anyway, it collects a thrilling array of uncanny storytelling from the realms of gothic, supernatural, and horror fiction. From the 19th century to the present day, um, there are at least 20, maybe 30 uh, books, all sorts. Um, one for set, one where all the stories are set around Christmas, one where they're all women, lost women, it says, lost stories from the women of the weird, heavy weather, that might be interesting, hauntings, crawling horror, Cornish horrors, horrors, <laughs> um, Promethean horrors, uh, tales of the tattooed, if that's your thing, haunted houses, mortal echoes, spirits of the seasons, yeah, that's the Christmas one, uncanny tales of the railway, that's not so much for me. Um, so anyway, there are a bunch of them. The two that most interested me are Evil Roots, Killer Tales of the Botanical Gothic. Um, because if I'm going to like any horror story, it's going to be a gothic one involving plants. So yeah. <laughs> um, this is Strangling Vines and Meat Hungry Flora. Fill this unruly garden of strange stories. Please and thank you. The next one I got, because I live in Canada and half the year is winter, is Polar Horrors, Strange Tales from the World's End. So these are stories, half of them are from set in the Arctic, half of them are set in Antarctica. I can never say Antarctica. Antarctica. That's a hard word to say. Or maybe it's just me. Anyway, uh, inspired by groundbreaking expeditions in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Also p possible tinges of colonialism there, right in, in the Arctic anyway. Writers of the Weird began to construct a literary Arctic and Antarctic in which terrors lay undiscovered in the ice. 
and gateways to bizarre hidden worlds lay wait. From blurred Arctic narratives of life amongst polar bears to tales of ghostly visitations within the windblown wilds of the southern continent, etc., etc. So, um, I mean, cold, dark, Arctic, sure. Um, I mean, to most Americans, I'm probably close enough to the Arctic Circle, even though I'm not really close to that far north. <laughs> But some days in January, it sort of feels like it because it's been winter at that point for like, well, any day now we can get snow. It's October. So winter could start literally any day. <laughs> um, okay. There are a few other Gothic books that I got. So this one I found, one of the other Gothic books I read, I think the one by Sue Chaplin that I talked about last time, um, had a bunch of recommended reading, which, you know, very dangerous. Whoops. So I slipped on that and um, fell on The Gothic Postcolonialism and Otherness, Ghosts from Elsewhere by Tabish Harir? Hayer? Yeah. Probably not pronouncing that close to accurately. Um, he's from India anyway. And this says it is a re-examination of the role of the colonial slash racial, racial other in mainstream gothic colonial fiction. This book goes on to engage with the problem of narrating the subaltern in the post-colonial context. So it does sound quite academic, but it also sounds quite interesting. It engages with the problems of representing difference in lucid conceptual terms with much attention to primary texts and highlights the strengths and weaknesses of etc. etc. lots of European writers um, with a few non-European writers. Um, Yeah. Ooh, there's a focus on the war on terror as a topical hook. Interesting. He places the foreign other as a central function in the Gothic in texts set both in Britain and the ex colonies, particularly in the Caribbean, where British influence is revealed as frequently demonic. I mean, it's not entirely unfair. <laughs> um, so there's that. These are two little volumes that I didn't realize were quite so little, but they're little. Um, the price would have seemed to have indicated that they'd be a little less little, but it's my fault for not looking at the number of pages, I guess. I think I still would have gotten them though, because they are, are they academic? No, that one's not. And some press. I don't know what that is. They're both by professors of literature though. And some studies in Gothic literature incorporates a broad range of titles. I don't know what that is. Anthem. Nope. Series editor from the University of Windsor. That's Canadian. Cool. So it seems like there might be others in this series, which I will have to look up because I found these by accident on uh, Amazon and pre-ordered them. Um, this is Gothic Appalachian literature, Appalachian. I'm never sure how you're supposed to say that. Um, and they're going through a bit of a rough time at the moment with the hurricane and everything. Um, but I've always found that region fascinating, um, despite the weird stereotypes and things that Americans seem to have of it. I also find the accent fascinating and kind of beautiful. Um, so this uh, carefully re researched Pronunciation, jeez. Study explores the diversity and complexity of Appalachia, the most stereotyped and other region of America, as revealed in its Gothic literature. Um, so that sounds kind of cool. And then this one is Nordic Terrors, Scandinavian Superstition in British Gothic Literature. This challenges conventional notions of the Gothic other by exploring how British writers of the 18th and 19th centuries embraced Nordic traditions as integral to their own historical and cultural heritage. Da, 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 da. Pagan religion, folklore, and the Norse presence in Britain, etc. Dark horrors of the yeah, oh, the Gothic, fine, lovely. Seems cool. Written by a professor at the University of Copenhagen. Cool. This one is a professor in Bristol, this uh, Appalachian one. Uh, so yeah, I didn't know that this was uh, going to be a series of 
I see a series out of there. Maybe these are the only two books in the series so far, because I don't see anything else, but I'll have to look that up because these ones sound pretty cool. And they won't take very long to read, I don't think, even if they are academic because they're so wee. Um, then, is that the extent of the gothic stuff? Yes. Good. Okay. Then I've got some other books. Um, one of them, because I'm a geek and ridiculous, is The Cambridge Companion to Ulysses, because I wasn't going to get any more of these, because I've gotten the gothic one and the Brontes one, and I haven't read either of them yet, so I don't know if I like them yet. I'm assuming I will, because of course I will. Um, and I wasn't going to get any more, because they're about $40 each, but then I found a used copy of this for much cheaper than that, so sure. Um, then I got, so Stephen Graham Jones is coming to a literary festival near me and I'm going to one of his events with Jeff Vandermeer. And, um, I've read The Elk One. Why am I? The Only Good Indians. Um, and I liked the writing, but I couldn't handle the genre. It's a bit much. I can't really, <coughs> I am getting a, a book of short stories that's based on or inspired by Shirley Jackson and he's written one of those so we'll see if I like that. This one is not horror horror it's um just a story set on the Blackfeet Reservation in Montana which sounds kind of interesting the reviews are intriguing and um I mean they're in as much as there are horror elements it sounds like it's just the horror of uh, racism in the U.S. Which, you know, if you're indigenous, you... yeah. Okay. I mean, there are some horrors involved in that, so... <laughs> um, but it's not... Uh, outside of that, it's not horror, so, it, you know, as you like, I guess. Um, then I got... okay, so I've never gotten a book based on an ASMR video before, but I was watching one, and she was talking about the books she got, and this one sounded so intriguing, and because it's October, and the winter solstice isn't that far away now. I got Winter Solstice, an essay by Nina McLaughlin. Um, so, do, 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 smart and lyrical, this book makes you feel alive. I wish, you know, like, if books would tell you what they're about on the back, that would be grand. Um, this one doesn't, but one of the blurbs says she celebrates, returns to celebrate the winter solstice and delivers a most sensual hymn and harbor for the human ability to feel our way through the darkness towards the wise, unexpected connections. This ethereal collection offers us a candle at night. Um, it sounds like it's very probably poetic language from what I've heard, and um, I am trying and have been trying the last couple years to embrace winter. For a while, I just was like hated winter because I don't do out uh, outdoor sports or anything. Um, but I have decided I need to embrace winter as one of the seasons that we need. It's important. It's not all bad. There's hot chocolate. Um, then I got I'm Being Ill by Virginia Woolf. I feel like I saw this on Rachel from Second Thoughts About the Mission, uh, her channel, I think. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. It's a tiny little thing, but it only costs like six dollars or something, so. Uh, Canadian. I don't know what that is, American. Less than that, um, because the exchange does not help um, Canadians at the moment. Anyway, um, she had some considerable experience with illness, and I've been on a Virginia Woolf re reading spree. I still want to read Between the Acts this month, I think, because that's the last one that I haven't read that is, except for The Voyage Out, but from the sound of it, that's also too ordinary and meh. Um, but Between the Acts is one of also her um, Stream of Consciousness books, so I want to try that. But yeah, so yeah. Um, uh, I have had mental illnesses in the last year and also some undiagnosed physical fun. It's delightful. I'm trying to get doctors to take you seriously. It's not super pleasant. Um, anyway, I figured I'd read a book about that by Virginia Woolf. So these next ones are all from the Read Around the World Challenge. Um, I really need to not ever go on eBay again and look for, like, secondhand. It's dangerous. But, you know, if you can find them all for a few dollars, like, they're cheaper than they would be at my local used bookstore, and I wouldn't be able to find 
books from some of these countries there so oh wow well. <laughs> um this is a book from Azerbaijan an Azerbaijani writer um Stone Dreams the subtitle is a novel Requiem Requiem I am having trouble with my words today um set in the last years of the Soviet Union it tells the story of an actor who lands in a hospital while trying to protect an elderly Armenian man from a gang um something of a modern day Don Quixote cool um Sedai has long battled the hatred and corruption he observes in contemporary Azerbaijani society wandering in and out of consciousness he visits yada yada various places once lived peacefully and dreams of making a pil pilgrimage of atonement to Armenia so there has been as I understand it some violence wrought on Armenia in the past by Azerbaijan that's the extent of my historical knowledge. I will have to Google it or see what I can find out by reading this book, which apparently is beautiful. Um, the writing I've heard is beautiful. So yeah, that's that. This is a book by, I think, is he Armenian? I think he, this is the Armenian author. Because Armenia and Azerbaijan are the two countries in the Caucasus that I haven't read books from yet. So this is called Ex Fradium no idea how to pronounce that referred to as cobra poison and the work of the antichrist by international religious figures and as anti-literature by the author it's an incendiary and energetic tour de force that mercilessly skewers religion national identity economics gender social mores and above all the very structure of language itself equal parts satire and philosophy polemic and prophecy it explores the narrator's journey through dysfunctional social, national, and cultural strata, etc. Acerbic and oracular. So it sounds interesting. It has some astonishingly terrible reviews on Goodreads, but I couldn't tell if that was because of the religious stuff. Um, yeah, but you know, like if you get religious figures, like especially the extreme religious figures, um, upset with you. Not entirely opposed to that. Um, this is Letter to Jimmy by Alan Mabanku. Memoirs of a Porcupine is the subtitle. I don't know what that's about. The Jimmy in the question is James Baldwin. It was written on the 20th anniversary of his death by an African writer from which country? Congo. Congo Brazzaville. Which is not the DRC in the middle, it's the smaller Congo off to the side, the west, west side, yeah. Um, so it was written on the 20, 20th anniversary of Baldwin's death. It's an ode to his literary hero and an effort to place Baldwin's life in context within the greater African diaspora. Diaspora. I don't know. Um, I do love James Baldwin, and I was looking for a book to read from the Congo, and I hadn't heard of Alain uh, Mabanku. Cool. But, um, oh, author of Memoirs of a Porcupine. That's not the subtitle. That's a different book he's written. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, <laughs> anyway, he, uh, oh, he teaches French literature at the UCLA. Cool. I think this was written in French originally. Um, but, you know, and so I'm not opposed to, to attempting to read things in French slowly. Um, but if I can find it in English for cheap, why not? Uh, anyway, he, uh, James Baldwin did write a lot about, of course, the American, uh, the Black American experience, but he also wrote about Africans and Algerians in Paris and, um, his experiences, because he had very different experiences in Paris, but he was American, he wasn't North African, and the North, North Africans have a particular experience, um, in France. Um, not a particularly pleasant one, often. So, uh, yeah. I'm a fan of James Baldwin, so I thought I'll give this one a go. So the next couple I've got are for the Caribbean. There are some islands in the Caribbean and some in the Pacific that I cannot, for the life of me, find books in Canada. Like, I just, it's impossible. St. Kitts? No idea. Van Vanatu? No idea. So as a interim measure, 
like some of the Barbados and the Bahamas and some of the bigger Caribbean islands and some of the bigger Pacific islands I found books for. And so when I can find the books, I'll read those. And in the meantime, when I can't, for the other islands, I've got some collections of short stories. So I'm not gonna list off because I can't remember them all, the countries um, that are included in each of these books. But this is the Oxford Book of Caribbean Short Stories. Um, it is um, not little, but it's it's got quite a lot. It's and some authors I've heard of, like um, Astrid Romer, who I'm reading right now, and loving. She's from Suriname, um, and then Jamaica Ken Kincaid from Antigua. But there are authors from Guyana. That w it was hard to find a book from Guyana. I can't remember if I did. Trinidad. I found authors from Puerto Rico. I have, but like Martin. Martinique? Did I find an author from Martinique? I might have. Um, so yeah, some of these countries I have um, written, or not written, huh, read whole books from, but some of them um, less so. So uh, yeah, this sounded kind of interesting. And um, I mean, this whole project is a bit silly in some ways, because first of all, you obviously, um, I should like to think it's obvious anyway, that you can't represent a whole country with one book, but also to have one book for like Trinidad and one book for China is also ridiculous. Like, d does it make any sense? No, it's just for fun. And to sort of like crack open the world and humanize the world a little bit so that it's not just random places on a map that I've never heard of. And so that if it, if certain countries come up in the news, I've got some actual human, like what feels like a real human face to put on people, you know? Um, it seems to me like that's part of the point of doing it. It's not to try and find one book that represents a country because that's silly. Anyway, tangent aside, this is one of the ones for the Caribbean. I've got another one from the Caribbean coming, but it was one of these ones that was ordered from someplace in eBay, on eBay that's not in Canada, so I don't know, who knows when I'll get it. The next two are from the Pacific Ocean. This is Va, stories by, excuse me, stories by women of the Moana. I don't know what the word the, Mo, the Moana means. I don't understand that. So hopefully in the, there's some sort of preface or something. Um, yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. No, no, there's not. Okay, well, maybe I'll figure it out as I go. Anyway. There are tons of stories in here. Some of them shorter, some of them longer. Like some of them are like four pages long. Oh, that one's like three pages long. Um, so some of them are quite short, some of them are longer. From Samoa, Honolulu, New Zealand, Fiji, um, do -do 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 -do, the Cook Islands. See, these are some of the ones that were harder to find. Ni Vanatua, tu, tu, Ni Vanuatu, um, Papua New Guinea, Rotoman, I don't even know where that is, I'll have to Google it, Tonga, Samoa, Samoa I think I found a book from, the Torres Straits, Chamorro, the Cook Islands, like I can find authors from Fiji, from New Zealand, from Hawaii, but some of these other, like the smaller ones, if there are books published in English, I have no idea how to get them in Canada, so in the interim, this one and the next one are going to have to do Indigenous Pacific Islanders Eco Literatures, which sounds kind of interesting because I am interested really in climate change. And some of these Pacific Islands are the first ones to suffer. I mean, they are suffering now. The ocean is encroaching on them and may eventually bury some of them in water. Um, so this is uh, a collection of Indigenous writers from Polynesia Melanesia and Micronesia and the Global Pacific Diaspora. Um, it's an ecological form with rhizomatic roots and blossoming branches. Cool. Uh, a wild garden of genres including poetry, chant, short fiction, novel excerpts, creative nonfiction, visual text, and even a dramatic play. Cool. All written in multilingual offerings of English, Pacific languages, pidgin, and translation. Uh, that's really cool. Um, yeah, so I am, uh, 
pretty excited to read this one. It's from it, the New Oceania Literary Series. One of the professors works in Hawaii, one of them in San Francisco, and one is a climate envoy for the Republic of the Marshall Islands. All right. So yeah, it's literature, but it's about the environment of countries that are already facing some of the extreme dangers of climate change. Um, and I didn't realize there were so many literary formats in here, like poetry and chants and what else did they say? A play, all sorts of things. So uh, that's cool. I will enjoy exploring that. That is my list of used book haul for around the world and gothic and horror. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.